eight types of medication that are given as nasal sprays. First of all, let us see what are the various routes of administration. The most widely used route of administration is the oral route. So we are giving the drugs by tablets, capsules and syrups. And this is one of the most widely used route of administration. And another route is the parenteral route where we are giving the drugs by using either intravenous or intramuscular route. Still we have other types of administration. And then the route of administration is the inhalation where we can give the drugs as aerosols. Otherwise, we can give the drugs as dry powder inhalers where a capsule is filled with a dry powder which is inhaled deeply into the lungs. Still, we have other routes of administration like ophthalmic route, rectal route and other routes of administration. But when we use the nasal route by using the nasal sprays. So first of all, let us see why drugs are given as nasal sprays. One of the important application is to produce a local effect. Nasal sprays can be used as the nasal decongestants as they produce relief of congestion. And they can also be used to reduce the allergic reactions locally so that they can relieve the congestion. Another important application is to avoid the first pass effect. Whenever drugs are given, the drugs are undergoing the first pass metabolism which decreases their bioavailability. So when the drugs are given as a nasal route, they directly enter into the systemic circulation so the bioavailability of the drugs can be increased. So in this way, these are the two applications of the nasal sprays as one route of administration of drugs. What they contain? Nasal sprays mainly contain the different medications and can be used in the various conditions. So they can be used in the conditions like common cold, allergic rhinitis, asthma, and even osteoporosis. In this way, we have eight types of medication that are given as the nasal sprays. So let us go one by one and discuss which type of drugs are given as the nasal sprays. So the first one is the antihistamines. So foreign particles like the pollen grains can act as the allergens so which will stimulate the mast cells within the body which cause the release of the one of the inflammatory mediator histamine. Now this histamine produces the allergic response which causes itching, irritation, runny nose and swelling. So all these uh, can be decreased by use of the antihistamines. Now the antihistamines can be given by two routes. One is the oral route and second one is the nasal sprays. Most of the drugs are given by the oral route but very few drugs are given as the nasal sprays. So the two drugs which are given as the nasal sprays include agilastin and olopatidine. So these two drugs are given as the nasal sprays. So these drugs are indicated for the treatment of the allergic rhinitis. So second type of medication is the mast cell stabilizers which are given as the nasal sprays. So mast cells which are degranulated to release the histamine as already we have seen histamine is a one of the inflammatory mediator. Now some of the drugs like mast cell stabilizers can stabilize the mast cells so that it is not depolarized and it is not degranulated to release the histamine. So mast cells can inhibit the degranulation of the histamine. At the same time, mast cell stabilizers can also inhibit the release of the one of a potent mediator leukotriene release. Leukotriene is again another inflammatory mediator. So in this way, mast cell stabilizers can inhibit the inflammatory response. Now we have the two drugs in the mast cell stabilizers. First one is the nidochromyl and second one is the chromoline sodium. Nidochromyl is given as an meter dose inhaler as an aerosol whereas chromoline sodium is given as a nasal spray. 
So one of the drug which is given as a nasal spray is the chromoline sodium. And third type of drugs which are given as a nasal sprays are corticosteroids. What is the use of the corticosteroids? So corticosteroids can be used in the various conditions and they can inhibit the allergic rhinitis, asthma, arthritis and skin inflammation. So corticosteroids are the one of the important anti-inflammatory agents. So we have many of these corticosteroids like hydrocortisone, prednisone and prednisolone but all these three drugs are not given by nasal root. So which type of drugs are given as the nasal root? So let us see the corticosteroids given as the nasal sprays. So drugs like budesonide, cyclosonide, mometasone, fluticasone, beclomethasone and triamcinolone. These are the only corticosteroids which are given as the nasal sprays. So they are indicated for again allergic rhinitis and nasal allergies. Sometimes we can also give a combination of two drugs like agilastin plus fluticasone which is given as a nasal spray. So here agilastin is one of an antihistamine and fluticasone is a corticosteroids. So both of these drugs can be combined and can be given as a nasal spray. And fourth type of drugs which are given as nasal sprays are nasal decongestants. One of the widely used drugs by the nasal root action of decongestants. Suppose nasal blood vessels undergo a vasodilatation which causes a blocking of the nasal pathway and nasal decongestants are acting like a local vasoconstrictors which will cause the constriction of the blood vessels within the nasal pathway. So they clear the nasal pathway thereby they relieve the congestion in the nostrils. So we have the drugs like oxymetazolin, xylometazolin and pseudoephedrine. These three drugs are given as a nasal decongestants by the nasal root. But we have a limitation for the nasal decongestants. Nasal decongestants when they are given they can produce a rebound congestion by their continuous use. So these nasal decongestants should not be used for more than three days. So what is the difference between the other medication and the nasal decongestants which are given by the nasal root? So one category of drugs are the decongestants and another category of drugs are the antihistamines, corticosteroids, bronchodilators and calcitonin. All these type of drugs are given as the nasal sprays. The second list of drugs can be given as the nasal sprays and they can be used for longer periods. While decongestants are the drugs which are given only for three days and they should not be used for more than three days. So in this way decongestants use is confined only for short period. And fifth type of medication is the saline nasal sprays. There is no medication in the saline nasal sprays. So they simply contain sodium chloride which is isotonic with the body fluids. So since they are having no medication, they can be used without any adverse effects. Sodium chloride causes the clearing of the mucus by thinning of the mucus which is cleared and excreted. So these drugs are particularly preferred in the infants and children where the medication is not recommended. And six category of drugs are the anticholinergics. So anticholinergics like the atropine, dicyclomine, tiotropium, so many drugs are there within this anticholinergic category but these three drugs are not given as the nasal root. So only one of the drug that is given as a nasal spray is the ipratropium bromide. Ipratropium bromide is a bronchodilator as well as it inhibits the nasal secretion so it can be used in the few of the conditions like the allergic rhinitis. So it inhibits the nasal secretions, hence reduces the runny nose. And seventh category of drugs are the nasal sprays for systemic use. Till now we have seen the drugs are given as nasal sprays to produce a local effect, but we have few of the drugs which are intended for the systemic use. So one of the drug is the calcitonin. Calcitonin is one of the drugs used to treat the osteoporosis. So it is given as a nasal spray. So it is indicated for a systemic purpose but it is given by the nasal root. 
what is the advantage of this nasal route? So when the drug is given as a nasal route, the drug can directly enter into the systemic circulation, so it avoids the first pass metabolism, thereby the bioavailability can be increased. So calcitonin is a peptide, so which may have a first pass metabolism. So when it is given by the nasal route, the bioavailability of the calcitonin can be increased. And eighth one is the product to nasal sprays. HPMC, which is hydroxypropyl cellulose, which acts as a barrier, so it prevents the contact of the allergen with the mucus. So it can form a gel by absorbing water, thereby it prevents the contact of the allergen with mucus. So it acts as a physiological barrier between the allergen and the mucus. In this way, it can suppress the allergic response. So these are the eight types of medication that are given as nasal sprays. So let us hope so many drugs may be added into this list so that nasal route acts as one of the optimal route of administration for effective drug therapy.